But let, let's look at this real quick. This is the most up-to-date uh, forecast that major financial institutions are calling for recovery. And see kind of this V-shape. This was um, as of 4.15. Today is the 20th. We're five days after those things are moving very fast. We update this information as we have it. So what you see is you see the four major institutions that we're following right here that have projected this throughout the year, Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, Morgan Stanley, and Wells Fargo calling for you know, downturn here in the first quarter, which that'll be uh, released here in the next week by the end of the month. And then the sharp decline down in the second quarter um, with a rebound in the second half of the year what they would call at this point a V-shaped recovery. So let's talk about recoveries real quick. There's three predominant recoveries that, that you wanna look for. There's a, a V-shape, which is this down and then back up. I'll imagine if you had a tennis ball and you threw it down and it shot back up. There's this U-shaped recovery, which is we go down and we stay down longer than this, this rapid you know, jump back up. And then what we don't want is an L-shaped recovery, which is down and then uh, we stay down. You know, if you had that tennis ball on an L-shaped recovery, it's a dead tennis ball. You throw it down and it, it stays there and rolls off. And so what we're seeing right now, as far as forecasts for major financial institutions, is this V-shaped recovery. Now we're watching that to see, okay, what does that look like? What are they saying? It really, you know, you can see here Wells Fargo is saying, well, maybe in the third quarter, we're going to see negative GDP. Uh, three out of the four are saying positive, but we're staying on top of that to be able to give you that information. But suffice it to say, the second half of the year, financial institutions, major financial institutions, see positive uh, growth in GDP. So I pulled a quote from, from Goldman Sachs, and it says, if policymakers manage to thread the needle, important word right there, between continued virus control and the gradual reopening of the economy, the level of GDP should begin to move higher in the months ahead. So what do we know right now? We're in this process of, you know, can we get back to work? How do we get back to work? When do people feel comfortable going out? And there's that thread the needle analogy. It's going to be tough to do. And we know it's going to vary from state to state, from area to area, town to town, on what can we do to, you know, to the level of severity of, of outbreaks and things like that with COVID-19. But suffice it to say that as we do that, the levels of production should grow. We should be able to, to release, um, uh, you know, to go back to work and businesses get back to, to work. I want to bring in next, what are business owners saying about this right now? And this is a, uh, a study we've been following that they continue to update uh, from Price Waterhouse Coopers of 50 leaders from a cross section of industries that were asked if it were to end today, how long would it take you to get your business back up and running? And what we saw when this, this study first came out in the middle of March is that um, six out of 10 said within 30 days, nine out of 10 said certainly within 90 days. And then you saw that, you know, digress as we went on from nine out of 10 to really seven out of 10 uh, to now six out of 10 saying, Hey, I'd be ready within 90 days. So, so certainly, you know, business owners not feeling as confident, but the majority of them still saying within 90 days, within the three months, we would be back to business as usual. So it's an interesting look at the, um, at what financial institutions are forecasting and then what business leaders are thinking. So next, I want to pull in, you know, kind of a perspective on what does this mean to home prices? We're starting to see some forecasts being done and projections being done. Uh, one that we follow is the Z Report, which Ivy Zellman uh, founded. If you're not familiar with Ivy, she is a leading um, a forecaster and analysis analyst in our business that you know, gives a lot of information to hedge funds and larger companies about the housing market. And she says, Supported by our analysis of home price dynamics through cycles and other periods of economic and housing disruption, we expect home price appreciation to decelerate, not depreciate, but decelerate from current levels in 2020, though easily remain in positive territory year over year, given the beneficial factors of record low inventories and a historically low interest rate environment. So, so what is she saying there? That while we may not see the appreciation this year that we thought we would see, we will not see depreciation uh, in home values, largely given the, the inventory scenario and, and rate scenario that we find ourselves in. 
if I were to compare her projections, which we did to pre-COVID-19 to post-COVID-19, you can see those there where prior to, to going into this, this crisis, uh, they were projecting for 2020, about 4.7% appreciation in the housing market, and that's been updated to 3%. Uh, after that, uh, in 2021, you can see there's an uptick in, in appreciation. They were originally calling for about 3.8% appreciation, and now that's 42 and they had not yet forecasted uh, 2022 and are saying that looks like 4.6%. So what you notice about that graph there is there are no red bars. There's no depreciation, something, something key to remember there. Um, I dropped this in just as a quick reminder. I know we get a lot of requests for slides. If you go to keepingcurrentmatters.com forward slash coronavirus, a lot of this is there. You can grab stuff there uh, if you need it. 